Hey everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. And today is the beginning of the Airfix 148 scale P51D Mustang for the Peter Person Tribute build to be done in Swedish markings. So real quick like, I'll just talk a little bit about uh, what I'm going to be using for this kit. Um, other than the usual tools, cutters, knives, sanding sticks, clamps, all that kind of stuff. I will be using these colors here. Um, Tamiya XF1, XF3, XF7, XF5, XF22 to do the various colors I'm going to need on here. Uh, black for the um, anti-glare panel. Uh, XF3 yellow for the spinner. Um, the green and then these two will be used for the uh, landing lights uh, on the wings and then for the metal finish I'm going to be using assorted metal finish colors by Vallejo uh, called acrylic metal color airbrush colors I have aluminum dull aluminum steel and silver and as a base I'll be using uh, per Vallejo's recommendation and per uh, my prior experience with these colors I'll be using uh, their gloss black surface primer which works really well for this generally don't care too much for the Vallejo primers uh, just because they're kind of hard to clean out of the airbrush they tend to skin over in the cup and stuff like that but it works really well on the kit using these colors <clears throat> also as you can see here um, I have some uh, putties because on P51s at the factory they puttied up all the surface detail on uh, the wing surfaces to help with airflow and it was done using um, putties and lacquer based sealers paints whatever so it came out to pretty much other than removable panels for access for maintenance whatever the wings were smooth and for some crazy reason most manufacturers offer a lot of detail on the wings that really should be filled in according to the historical record. So that is what I'm going to be doing at a later point in the build. Um, in addition to these, I may be using Mr. Surfacer 500 uh, because I think I want to create, just from photos I've seen, the detail and the rivets and everything isn't 100% completely, totally smooth on some aircraft. It's more of, uh, there's just a little bit of a shadow of the um, detail left. Um, so I'm going to kind of experiment with a little bit, with it a little bit to see what I like the best. Also, as you can see, I have this uh, digital silk draw decal um, decal set that I'll be using. I went over that in the initial uh, talk about this kit and what I was going to be using. Um, but this will serve as my color guide and uh, the decals that I'll be actually putting on the aircraft. Then I also have some reference materials here. Uh, this was from Large Scale Planes. Um, J.R. Heilig on there uh, did this, came up with this uh, illustration here and it shows where uh, everything has to be smoothed in and what needs to be left as far as removable panels so forth so there's one then I also have this one here this one is by John Terrell it also shows uh, zinc chromate base coat here Acme gray surfacer here red velatine glazing putty on all of these lines here so uh, that is what I'm gonna be doing and it does need to be done top and bottom as per these illustrations. So those are the materials 
that I'm going to be using for this kit. So I'm going to get all this cleared off and we'll get started. All right, so the first parts we need are D33 and 36. I've got part D33 cut off here. Uh, part D36 is right here. And as you can see, I'm cutting them off pretty far away on these particular parts uh, because I want to trim them afterwards. Quick note, one thing I like to do is put a little marker on here so it's a little easier to see at a quick glance when I'm looking for the sprues. So again, people keep in mind I'm doing this particular part of the series for beginner modelers. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to say and do is going to be pretty uh, basic, but not everybody's got the same skill set. So, you know, trying to do my part here to help out. So we'll trim those sprue attachment points off. Cut these a little bit closer. I could have done this on the sprue, but this is my first time working with an Airfix kit, so until I see how they're attached consistently, I want to uh, exercise a little caution. So I have to say, so far, the plastic is good, it seems, on this kit. And it is a 2017 kit, so uh, it's kind of nice. Again, this is a milestone. I've never done an Airfix kit in my life. <clears throat> then the little mold seam will sand that off. Make sure that looks good. Now as we go along and you kind of see how um, I'm doing these things. I won't be quite so meticulous in everything that I video because it won't be necessary. Some of it, will, a lot of it, will be redundant. I don't want people to get too awful bored any more than necessary listening to me blab about what I'm doing. So, what I'm going to do here because it has color callouts on it already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble as much as I can before I paint. Now that's the way I like to do it. Some people like to paint as they go. Um, I just like to paint as much as possible after assembly. Um, just so um, I don't end up with uh, weak glue joints. Um, the cement I use to me extra thin generally eat right through the paint and it won't cause a problem with uh, adhesion but I just like to uh, I like to play it safe okay so that fits on there pretty good so I'll hold that in place take my cement and I'll show you as I go along the way I use different cements it's like in a case like this where I can hold a piece in place and I want to set up pretty quick this is the way I do it. I cement it in place and we're good to go. Make sure it's lined up properly and there you go. Now on some things, like if I'm putting two pieces together, I will use the thicker liquid cement. But I'll get to that when it arises. We've got that. So the next piece we need is D37. Sometimes what I'll do is I will cut all of the appropriate parts off, especially if they're different enough looking that I don't have to worry about mixing parts up. That way they're all ready to go. And as I progress through this build, for the sake of video, that is what I'll be doing just so it's not taking so long to get through all these steps. But for now, I'm just going to take it 
slow and just uh, pretend that whoever's watching has limited model building experience so as to make it a little bit easier. And don't worry, those of you who don't want to watch all this kind of stuff, I will be doing periodic recaps of everything that I've done as in a separate video series, kind of. Um, so you can just see what's been going on and I can talk about, you know, any fit issues if there are any and stuff like that. So we've got a seat like that. And then we've got this part here. Now this part here is the seat belts. So you know what? I really want to make sure those are cleaned up good because I don't want any weird seam lines on them. Fits just like that. So hold this. Run a bead of cement right there. Viola. That's in place. Not a bad way to do it. Okay. So there's that. Then we have the seat back, which is D02. Now one thing I like about this so far is they do have these sprues all in numerical order. There are some manufacturers that will have numbers all over the place and they won't even have letter designations on the separate sprues. And that can be a royal pain when you're trying to find stuff. This, their numerical order, so you just go along until you find the number you're looking for. and Ta-da. Sand these a little bit sharp edge off here. The reason I'm doing this one edge like that is because of this. Quick illustration. Sometimes when you have two mold halves that come together, that your part might be flat on this side and not here. So when the part comes out, It's supposed to be, you know, squared up or whatever, but it'll have just an ever so slight, this is exaggerated, edge on it when it should be like that. So I just sand those off. That's the reason I sand one edge like that. Because that'll really show up once you start with your uh, weathering and stuff. Any 
many contact points there are, I'm going to glue just to make sure everything stays good. Just a quick note, I am using the quick setting to me extra thin for no other reason than that's what they had in stock last time I ran out of my the regular to me extra thin. This does seem a little bit hotter so it glues up, um, sets up a lot quicker and but other than that it's pretty much the same and it works really well. So we've got one, two, and three done. So let's do four real quick which is D22 and D44. There's 22. 44. Okay, let's see. Okay. Alright, so this has got a pretty good uh, mold line there. So I'm going to use the side of my the edge of my blade to scrape that off. Sometimes it's a little bit quicker than sanding and also prevents you from, uh, prevents one from um, rounding it off potentially. Now this probably isn't going to be seen but I like to clean them up anyway just out of habit Again, get those weird little mold ridges off the edge So I think as I go along what I'll do is, since you're kind of getting an idea of how I do this, what I'll probably do is I'll pre-prep the parts for a given step so I'm not having to do all this cleanup. So it's just a matter of assembling the parts test fitting and assembling the parts and seeing how they go together again so you don't get too bored watching this uh, monotonous stuff here it's a pretty good mold seam there need to get rid of. Now, if you hear a baby squawking, that is my little granddaughter. The current one of two apples of Pappy's eye. She's not very happy. She just ate. She's ready to go to sleep, I think. All right, so that's done. So according to the instructions, this goes on here that direction with that face in this way. So before I glue it in place, I'm going to make sure it's cleaned up. It's still got a little ridge there. Now some of this might be visible, some of it might not. I'm not real familiar with the way these things are set up. But a person could do a lot of detailing on one of these if they wanted to. 
So we'll put a little bit of cement on this. like that and that is now ready to go so next part we need is a11 which is this big cockpit tub part so as you can see this part is pretty large -ish and has a lot of connecting points to it so I am NOT going to uh, video that I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out and get it cleaned up and ready to go Okay, so I got this one, this part cleaned up. And here is a case where I'm going to want to use my other cement. Basically because I can't really get my brush down to where the parts go together because there's a gap in there. So I'm going to use this type here because it will not evaporate quickly like the other will. because the extra thin it sets up really quick because it evaporates really quickly I guess but what happens is if you put your glue on there that and you try and stick it together if you have to fumble around a little bit it's not gonna really stick into place so this way you can use that it gives you a little bit to put it in place and you can position it if you have to now since there's a seam down there I can use this to get that together like that so that's number five so the next part that goes together is this here but I want to take a look and see what I need to do as far as paint before I get too involved with uh, getting these parts together all right, for the most part, it looks like I'm going to be dealing with two colors, except for the seat detail. And those two colors are going to be 226, which is a humbrol color. But basically what it is, is it's a uh, interior green color, which I forgot to pull out. That's what I'm using. To me, a XF71 interior green. And then parts 84. Uh, anything with 85 which is this large section here which is a fuel tank um, and then this whole uh, battery radio business here is all 85 which is black so I basically got two colors so what I can do for ease of painting is I can install this part put this part in place like this I can glue that in place because all that's going to be one color then this in here and this in here will be the green so I can actually put this together before I uh, before I start painting it now on my kit and I'm sure it is on the rest there is a uh, ejector pin mark right here that is raised so that needs to come off so I'm just going to use my knife and trim that off that will help it sit a little more flush on top of this part here yeah that fits much better all right, so with that, go ahead and start cementing that together. that 
hold it for a second so it can set up. And there's that. Now, it also uh, calls out to install this from step three in place here. Now, considering you won't be able to see a whole lot of this once it gets buttoned up, that is a possibility. I could glue it into place so it can all be painted together at the same time. However, since contact points are pretty small and will be easy to clean with a knife, I think I may leave that off and paint that as a separate piece and glue that all together later. So I'll go ahead and get part number D19, which is the control stick. And I will go ahead and glue that into place. Because that can be painted. The parts that aren't the interior green color can be painted. after the base is laid down. So we'll get that cleaned up. So again, I'm gonna use this cement. like that so we got the control stick in place now we need D32 and D30 D30 has the rudder pedals on it or I mean sorry D32 D30 is the instrument panel So let me get these cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so the parts D30 and D32 are two different colors. And D30 has to have a decal put on it for the instrument. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this piece into place, leave this one off so I can paint it separately and do the decals and glue it afterwards because there is enough room to do so. So I'm going to use this cement again. that into place and that pretty much covers all the assembly I can do on this first page steps 1 through 10 um, which brings me to the point where I need to do some paint so with that and since there are going to be other uh, parts of the plane they're going to, have to be painted the same color so I can do them all at the same time. I'll set these sub-assemblies aside and I can move on to the next part, which will be starting on the underside uh, with the radiator that attaches to the part I just did. So with that, I think I'll call it quits on this part one of the build portion of this video next time i come back i'll start here on 11. so if you have any questions or comments or hints or tips on this particular kit i'd appreciate them if you'd put them in the comments section down below 
So thanks for joining me here on the Peter Person Tribute build of the Airfix 148 scale P51. And I will see you all next time.